Hello, welcome to today's episode of Dufresne Faith Journal. We're happy you joined us. I'm here with my mom, Pastor Nancy, and we have some friends with us, her pets, Lad and Chap. Yeah, yeah the stars here. They're the stars, hopefully they'll stay yeah, the whole episode. They may not. They might run off, so we'll see. <laughs> no, but they, when we were setting up, they wanted, they came and jumped up there, so we thought, well, we'll see, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. <laughs> uh, I know the story, our church knows the story, but maybe some of our viewers don't. Tell us how you met uh, Dr. Dufresne. That would have been back in 1984, which was what, 33 years ago now. And um, my life had been going a different direction. And of course, I had only been saved and filled with the Holy Ghost a very short time at that, at that time in my life. And uh, I just seemed to be led. I didn't know quite, I didn't quite understand the impact of it, but I seemed to be led to spend extra time praying in the Holy Ghost. So I locked myself up basically in my apartment for three weeks and I spent hours a day praying in the spirit. I would start out by spending time worshiping God, then I would start, then I would go from there to um, spending time in the word. And then I would spend a, a segment of time praying in the Holy Ghost. And I did that for three weeks solid. And the longer I prayed in the spirit, the longer I kept praying in the spirit. So every day it got more and more time of praying in the spirit. During that time, God didn't really say anything to me about the future or anything, but my brother and I, uh, my brother had come up to attend some meetings there in Tulsa. I was living in Tulsa at the time. And so we went to these meetings and uh, so we were sitting on the front row and the, the, the man who was scheduled to minister came out and then there was somebody else behind him that I didn't recognize and he walked out of the side room with the, the, the minister. And um, so, during the service, uh, the minister preached on healing and then he talked, he had this man who walked out with him. He said, I want him to come join me and lay hands on the sick. And so he did. And uh, so the two of them ministered to the sick that night. And when this second man started laying hands on people, I mean, things started dramatically happening and people would fall under the power of God, and, I mean, in dramatic ways. You know, they'd fly halfway back across the altar area. So I, uh, of course, I didn't recognize who it was and didn't know who it was. But after the meeting, we were invited, my brother and I, to go back into the back room, and we did. And so uh, they introduced me to this man who was present in the meetings, and uh, they said, well, this is Ed Dufresne. And so that was the first time I met him. And so um, we went two nights to those services and Ed was there both times. And so when we went out to dinner, the people strategically tried to seat us together. And so, you know, it was a, it was a setup in the making. On the second night, the, get, the minister's wife said, uh, Nancy, uh, she, she asked me for my phone number and she handed it to Ed and I didn't know she had done that. And so about two weeks after that, he started calling me. And then three weeks later, we were married. And so five weeks from the day we met, we got married. And then we, didn't even, we weren't even in contact those first two weeks after we met. Yeah. But see, God spoke to me um, that he was going to be the one I was going to marry. And of course, I didn't say that to him. but. <laughs> We had started, so after two weeks after we met, he started contacting me and we had been together, you know, seen each other a couple of times and then God mm -hmm. said to me, he's gonna be your husband. And so then during the three weeks that we were in communication with each other, he was in Europe for nine days. So we had only seen each other like five or six times wow. from the time we met to the time we got married. People should not do that <laughs> because yeah. That is the exception. That is not the rule. And yeah. I don't want people to think to try to force something like that. It was very <laughs> unusual. So you're not allowed to do that. But I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> so it was it it happened in a very dramatic way yeah. and it was um, divinely put together. It was divinely put together. Yeah. And I you know, the thing is is that Ed was in his forties at the time and he had been in the ministry for almost you know, for over 30 years and so uh, 
not over 30 years, I mean 20 years, and so <laughs> that wouldn't work. And so, <laughs> so you know, he had been walking with God. It, yeah. This we he wasn't a spiritual rookie, so to speak. He knew how to follow yeah. the Spirit of you God. Were a baby Christian. And I was a baby Christian, but God had spoken <laughs> to me in a very dramatic yeah. way. So that way we knew that it was God. Yeah. And of course, we were married um, right at 30 years before he went home to be with the Lord. And I tell you, it was easy. There was was never a big adjustment period because when God puts you together, it works and it, it works. fits. Before you met him, you were in prayer for three weeks. Praying, you spent hours a day praying. What, what did, another question here said, asks, what did those days consist of? Well, like I said, I started out um, spending time worshiping God. I'd take one hour and I'd worship God. I'd take an hour and feed on the Word, and then I clocked myself, not to earn something, so to speak, from God, but to clock my flesh. And I would say, I, I said, I'm gonna spend a minimum of four hours a day praying in the Spirit. But like I said, at the end of the several weeks of doing that, I, it was far beyond four hours yeah. because I got into a flow. Now, you have to understand, I know that people have jobs. I had a job but I had quit my job because my, my life needed to go a new direction. Yeah. I had to get out of the, the setting I was in, yes. So I wasn't just out shopping and out hanging out with my friends. I was seeking God and that made all the difference. And that's, that's why there could be an acceleration of God putting us together because I had, spent, I had been spending time with God. So, you know, when, when people are considering entering a marriage or they want to get married or they're facing any kind of opposition, take time to hear the Spirit. And so that that was the, the thing that got my life back on course. Mm -hmm. And when you got married over the years, you said dad was like your Bible school. Yeah, because I was raised in a in a in a sweet church, you know, denominational people, but we weren't taught the things that, you know, I, I was hearing Ed teach. So I had a lot of catching up to do. I mean, whenever I got married to Ed, I never even heard of the fivefold ministry. And so, and so I'm in, you know, here I'm marrying someone who's been in the ministry yeah. for over 20 years. Yeah. And um, so I had a lot of catching up to do. A question here asks, um, what are some things that you learned from him that stand out to you the most? Well, number one, he absolutely was a man of faith. And he didn't just know the principles or steps of faith. He had the spirit of faith. There was a spirit of faith about him. And one of the things that I so appreciated that you, um, you see a lot of people not quite understand is that Ed did not get rutted. You know, he was quick to move when God would say do something different because he understood uh, nothing's forever and God can redirect things. I mean, he pastored a church in Torrance, California for eight and a half years. He moved to Tulsa, that's where we met. And then we started a church. He, he built a building there in Tulsa, started it. Dad Hagen came and dedicated it. It was a building that sat on 85 acres. It seated a thousand people. We spent a, a couple of years building it. So he assumed, of course, that he was going to be pastoring it. So Dad Hagen came and dedicated the building. And um, we were there really only a few months after Dad Hagen dedicated it. We walked in the service one morning and God spoke to Ed and said, you're done here. He said, I want you to go to California, get back in position for the last day revival. So, you know, when people have put that much of their time, their effort, their energy into building a place, they would assume that they're gonna be there. Yeah. And so that's the, one of the things I learned with Ed with the spirit of faith is the spirit of faith is ready to move when God says move. And a lot of people assume, well, I built this church, I'm gonna stay here. They, if get I could say there. that they do, they get their emotions yeah. tied to that place. And they, so it, when God starts dealing with them about a change, possibly they miss it because they've already decided this is where I'm gonna be. Mm -hmm. The spirit of faith never decides I'm only going to stay here. The spirit of faith says I'm gonna move with God, whether it's staying here or moving to something different. And so I saw that throughout our 30 years of marriage that he would quickly adjust and redirect to move with God. Respond and that's quick. Spirit of, respond quick. Yeah. And um, then of course, another thing, he was a man led of the spirit. He was so keen 
the, the keenness that he had to the leading of the Spirit was remarkable. And the emphasis that he placed on the importance yeah. of being led by the Spirit was so critical. Mm -hmm. And so those two things stand out the most for me, yeah. Well, we have a lot more questions, yeah. but we don't have time for this episode. Uh, you will want to make sure you tune in for the next episode. We have a lot more questions, so you don't want to uh, miss it. Uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you for watching today's show. Be sure to check out all the latest episodes on our YouTube page. For more information, follow us on Facebook or visit our website at DufresneMinistries.org.